hello and welcome to this episode. I will be making a Chanel tweed jacket, navy blue and white, and I will also be making some fringing, double fringing there, it's actually four lots of fringing. I'll be making some braids and there will be beading, oh there will be copious amounts of beading, but first Join me as I make this gorgeous navy and white Chanel tweed up into a lovely jacket. It's perfect, 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 perfect. Perfect jacket. So here we have all the ingredients for a Chanel tweed jacket. We have copious amounts of fringe, an alarming amount, frankly, of fringing. And then we have the blue... Uh, navy blue silk for the lining and the actual tweed and the netting for the structural layer. I've put the fringe and the lining to the side and I just laid out all the pieces and I put the structural layer of each piece underneath and then after I'd laid them all out, just ignore the um, braid for the moment. You, It'll make a little more sense later. So after I'd laid each piece out, I turned, flipped them over and I just stitched them together so that I can work with um, each of the pieces just as one piece rather than a structural layer, separate structural layer and um, a tweed piece. This way they just, they... Um, they're easier to work with and you know they maintain the ins uh, their integrity so then I just pinned everything together so now everything's pinned together and hopefully the braiding makes a little more sense now and um, yeah so then I went and machine sewed everything and now all so yep it's looking more and more like a jacket now I just have to the top front and over there on the left is the top back and I have to sew them together and once they're sewed they become the shoulders so that's done now I just have to and of course I did the sleeves as well sew the under sleeve to the um, upper sleeve so for each sleeve so now what I have to do is pin down all the seam allowance and I don't ever trim the seam allowance. I just keep the full bit. It's very couture to leave the full set, um, the full width. And yeah, so now I just have to hand sew down all the seam allowance on every single panel. So yes, as a fun, as an ounce. So I will do that now. And here we go. There, um, yeah, it is all done and looking absolutely fabulous. I'm not really sure what to do about the butts of the um, braids because they're sort of tied off and I left them sort of, a, it looks like a little bit of a tassel. I think I would just cut them down, but you know, you have to be very brave to cut down a, at the end of a plait. So I'll just leave them for the moment. So yeah, here it is looking fabulous. And there it is on the back. And um, yeah, I'm sort of, I I kind of want to do the same braiding on the cuffs and maybe just over the shoulders, the arch of the, where the sleeve leaf meets the torso of the jacket. So that's what I'm thinking anyway. So that's why I put those ones in. So the next thing is to attach the, set the sleeves, which means attaching the sleeves. So I pinned them in place and just and then I sewed them with the machine and then I just turned them out to check that everything was okay and these are not the most perfect sleeves I've ever done but they're okay and so then I turned them back inside out and went reinforced it so I went round it again with the sewing machine and I did that for both sleeves obviously and then the next step is to pin the, um, actually I've got another um, jacket that I did that was transparent, so I'll get that one up. Gosh, this was actually the last jacket I made, it was about a month ago, and um, this ended up being the yellow flower jacket. Anyway, as you can see, you can see my fingers underneath, so what I do is I sort of pin it from the top and work from the outside. But yeah, my fingers are very much inside controlling where the needle, as I hand sew it, where the needle goes. And I, of course, trim down the seam allowance under the arm. So like the bottom third, bottom half 
of the armhole, you trim that down first and then you do one layer of stitching um, from the outside and then turn it in and uh, one layer of securing it from the inside. And then once it's done, I turn it out and I just roll the seam here. So the shoulder seam, I just roll it between my fingers so that um, all the seams and the seam allowance settles and then here we have the finished sleeves and um, yeah not the most perfect sleeves I've ever done if I had ample time I would take that left one off and just redo it um, but it, it'll do it'll do pig it'll do so yeah I'll just mm, I'm, I'm not thrilled with it but it's by most people's standards it will be fine so I think I'll just wear it a few times and if I still can't stand it I'll um pull it out and redo it I suppose so next thing is to attach the lining I'm just running so short of time and I, I feel like I oh and this is um me just trying out different things the um the thing is that fabric that I've used for the front panels of the lining is nowhere near that purple so I was trying to yeah figure out a way to color correct it but it didn't work so anyway I sewed the lining to the jacket and now I'm working with the whole thing as one piece so I pinned the collars together um, of the lining and the outer jacket um, with the right sides together and then I sewed around it and once I did check that that was fine then I sewed reinforced it by sewing around machine sewing it again and then I cut off quite a lot of the seam allowance just so that it didn't wasn't too bulky at the collar and then I clipped the curves so that it's nice when you turn it out then I top stitched it by hand in those lists you know 10 ways to make your garments look more couture yeah you're never supposed to use mach machine stitches in um, any way where they'll be visible so yeah you're also always supposed to do top stitching by hand I just prefer it because I think it looks better and it feels better too the garment sits better now it is time to get out the fringe all four lots yes four layers of fringe and here they are oh they're just looking fabulous aren't they now I know that seems like a lot but I do like a lot of fringe on my jackets I only have one actual Chanel jacket like from a boutique and that was made at um Chanel so that's it there and that has fringe on it not a huge amount of fringe but you know a reasonable respectable amount of fringe on it and then I have a couple that I've made that have just copious well this one's not completed but the fringe is and I made that myself with um lots of different yarns and threads and wools and things and um yeah and then of course I've got the um orangish one that's fully beaded on top and then got the handmade fringe at the bottom so yeah they are super extra so this one by comparison is actually pretty tame so what I've got is um the shorter one is just sort of doubled over piece of fabric and I just pulled out the um so the warp it goes one way and the weft goes the other way and one way is just all white cotton so I pulled those out so all that's left is all the interesting yarns and ribbons that were in the tweed and then the other bit is two thicker strips of um, the tweed and I've done the same thing pulled out the white cotton um, threads that were woven into it so this is the four bits that I've got so what I'm going to do is I don't know maybe when I'm older I'll only want two bits of um, fringe on there so I'm going to machine sew the um, the double bit on and then I turned it over and hand stitched it down into place and I'll probably pull out more of the white threads on this one maybe I don't know so that's what it looks like at the moment from the outside and now it, I'll just hand so I'll put these two in place and um, so this is me pinning the the first one was pinned down whoops forgot to film that and then yeah so I've started placing the second one over and pinning that down as well 
And now that they're pinned down, then I um, hand sewed them. And I actually did three rows of hand sewing. So this top one is a whip stitch and it's just holding everything in place. And then there were two rows sort of along the top, middle-ish, and then one along the bottom. And that's keeping everything in place. So it's sort of firm-ish, but yeah. So yeah, everything's there. And it is a little bulky, but I really like the way that if you add um, fringe to a jacket, a cropped jacket, sort of gives it a Dior new look-esque. It sort of accentuates the hips a bit more. So obviously I still need to trim this down to make everything even. But And I just put a couple of pins in there. I think I'll wear it with a um, like a vintage or an antique brooch at the waist because it looks, when you tie it sort of just at the stomach there, it sort of accentuates the, the curve in at the waist and the curve out at the hips. So obviously I have to trim this fringe down and make it even. I do like how it's tiered. I do, I think I'll keep the two different tiers, but I'll just even them out generally. So now that I was happy with the um the bottom the fringe part i had to do something about this top part so i either had to pull apart this sleeve or um do something and i had this jacket out on my coat rack it was hang just hanging on a coat hanger sort of yeah and i s saw it i was as i was making myself a coffee and i was like oh or i could put beads on there and um yeah so i started doing that obviously and um, yeah, got completely carried away as per usual when I get to the beading. And um, yeah, so it's mostly white, but there's a little bit of silver in there. And I, my intention, you can see a couple of the pearl pins on the other side. My intention is to do it on both sides, but I just sort of, as I said, I'm running out of time. So I just sort of did it on one side um, just to see what it's like. And I really like the asymmetry of it. I really like it on one side and not the other. But I mean, I probably will do it on both sides just because you kind of need the weight to be even. I love those bubblegum size beads. I've got some um, clear glass ones as well but I've also got some slightly smaller ones so I think I'll use a few of those and I absolutely love those ceramic skulls with the white um, glaze over the top I think they look fabulous in this so yeah I'm really happy with the way it's turning out and um yeah I'm so now though I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the cuffs I sort of intended to do the braiding so it would match the that um bit at the back but um yeah I really love the beading so and I really love the weight of having beads on your cuffs so um I'm not sure I think I'll just leave it sitting there for a bit and um yeah, I think I might end up doing beading on the cuffs rather than braiding. I think doing both would be a bit much. But um, yeah, I really like the beading's not finished, obviously. It's going to have more layers in there and more sequin, more of the big sequin sort of hanging over the bead under layer. But yeah, there are the skulls. They're so cool. So yeah, that's how it is at the moment. Oh, and I suppose I should show you, I'm not sure if you're interested in seeing how the braiding was made, but basically um, it's kind of the same as the fringe. You just pull out all the white cotton bits from the, um, like you take a piece of the actual tweed and you just start pulling bits out and um yeah so you just sort of pull the dark blue ones and then the ribbons come out and then yeah so you just sort of deconstruct it until and I just sort of threw away the white cotton bits and you end up with sort of in this um sh like I've got Chanel tweeds that have 36 different types of threads and yarns in them but this is actually a relatively simple one and there's just four different types of um, threads and yarn, like cottons and yarns and ribbons in there. So yeah, I just sort of pulled everything apart and put them into little piles. And then um, I divided them into four because I wanted four braids for this particular um, one. But I mean, 
you've seen the other fringes that I've done. I actually just bought, went out and bought a bunch of yarns. It's more expensive <laughs> to go out and buy yarns rather than, I know buying an extra half yard of Chanel tweed is quite the investment as well. But yeah, that's why I went out and bought all those yarns and it ended up costing me more in the end. There's like one of them cost me um $40 and there are a couple of others that cost nine and one cost 12 and things like that so it all adds up in the end so yeah anyway so I decided with this one here that I would add some more white so I've got some other white yarns so every time I finish making a tweed jacket I sort of pull apart the scraps and then I keep the like the yarns and the bits of wool and the ribbons and things so I can use them in other fringes or you know embroidery and stuff so yeah these are the ones I've got there's three different ones here one's um, black and white polka dot one's a fluffy white and silver and one's a sort of um, thickish it feels like a painted wool it's really cool. Anyway, so I used the painted wool and the polka dot one and I left out the white and silver one because I thought that was a bit too extra. So then I divided them equally into four. And then there's two ways you can do a braid. You can do a mixed one, which is this one here, where each of the three braids plaits has um, a mix of everything, or you can do the grouped one. And the one on the right is the grouped one where there's a dark braid, a ribbon braid, and then a white braid. I thought I would like the mixed one. That's the, that was my intention. I thought it would, um, I would really, really like that one. And I just did the three separate, you know, the grouped one just, you know, to show the difference. But yeah, I really love the, 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 the uh, three different strands I um yeah I think it looks so much neater and so much clearer and more well defined I was worried that it was going to be too jarring and look like blobs of dark um like navy blue from far away and um it sort of does but I still like it better than the mixed one I just think it looks so pretty and um, yeah, so I ended up undoing the, and these are plaits rather than braids. So, but I mean, if you care, then do braiding, but I don't, I just think they look really pretty anyway. So yeah, if you wanted to sew it onto a jacket, then obviously you make bigger pieces. But yeah, I was just sort of doing it as an experiment. Yeah, I do have um, enough navy and that ribbon stuff and white stuff to do cuff ones. But yeah, if you were just doing an entire jacket, then I would definitely recommend you do the cuff ones first just to practice and then do your big one piece or or do your big bit for that goes right around the torso up to the top, then right around the neck. That bit's like three, four, five yards. I mean, it depends on the type of jacket that you make. Obviously, when you make a cropped jacket, then there's a lot less length. And um, also, the bottom of your jacket, the hem of your jacket is actually quite a lot smaller. So you end up using a lot less trim. So yeah, it's, it's useless me saying this is how much you need to make. It just depends entirely on the size of the jacket and the type of jacket that you're making and whether you want one layer of trim or two layers I think two looks absolutely gorgeous I mean I make you've seen the beaded trims that I make they're really really thick and it's kind of like having two layers of trim so yeah I know there's another more economical way of making fringe where you sort of do a bias cut of the, you know, if you cut your tweed at a 45 degree angle, then you fray out both the warp and the weft of the, um, of the fringe, or like of the tweed and make it all fringe. But I don't know, it looks like a cheaper high street version, the jackets that you see made that way. I just, for me, the thing I really, really love about Chanel jackets um, with Lesage embellishment is that they're just so extra um like 
there's basically the same amount of money spent on the embellishments like the trims and the beading and the tweed, uh, you know, the extras as there is on the making the actual jacket. So that is what I love about them. So that's why I go so, you know, spare no expense with the trim and everything. But um, yeah, do what you want. But I'm I just feel like if you're going to that much effort to make a jacket, you might as well not cut corners with the trims because, yeah, I, you can just see it so much. If you just use one tiny, tiny layer of fringe that's sort of a little bit airy and there's not enough in there, then it just, I don't know, it looks disappointing to me. But, I mean, each to their own. Uh, this is definitely very very extra and that's what I love about it so yeah do what suits you I didn't really show the beading process when I do the other half I'll make sure to film each of the stages of that and make that a separate video a sort of shorter one at the end right at the end of the month but um yeah thank you for watching and have fun making your own Chanel style tweed jacket with all the trimmings